hello and welcome to this special little vlog um, my name is Shanti and I'm coming to you from the beautiful mid north coast of Australia um, today I thought I would do something a little bit different I have had a lot of people asking me to explain how I process my fleece and kind of the step by steps of that so yesterday we had a little bit of sun so I took the opportunity to get outside and process a little bit of alpaca that I've been working on so I thought I would take you along um, yeah, and show you how I process my fibre. Um, Everybody is going to have a different way of how they do things which is completely fine. Um, everyone has access to different things and yeah so I'm just going to show you how I find what works for me. Um, before we get started, I'm going to show you um, the things that I use and just answer a few things that people um, have asked over on my Instagram account. Um, the biggest question I've been asked is where I source my fibre from. Um, I have mentioned in the past that we do live semi-rural. Um, we are lucky enough to have a lot of farmland um, close to us. We have a lot of friends who have animals. Um, so honestly, I've been really, really blessed. Um, I have people offering fibre to me. So I haven't really had to source a whole lot of fibre myself. Um, the alpaca that I'm working on at the moment that you'll see in this video, um, I was given by a friend who is about 20 minutes away from us so it's all come very local um, again I like the idea of finding local fiber um, a place that I have found online is um, Facebook marketplace of all places uh, people are always having um, are always um, offering yeah raw fleeces um, from local to us anyway um, there is usually a lot of raw fleece um, open for sale and stuff on there. Um, but I also find that being open with what I'm doing and showing people what I'm doing, I have a lot of random people messaging me saying, hey, I heard from a friend that you're a spinner. We've just shorn our sheep or our alpacas. Um, I've had people offer Angora that they have rabbits. Um, yeah, like people are happy to pass on their fleece and their fibers to people who are going to use them um, they're not always usable um, but it's really cool that people are happy to pass those on so um, i really suggest putting it out there that you're looking for it maybe yeah facebook buy swap sell groups um, putting a little post out there asking for fibers um, yeah um, there are a few i think feel like Tandy at one point did have some raw fiber. Don't quote me on that again. Um, so they do pop up every now and then. Another good place um, is uh, your local spinners and weavers. I'm pretty sure they are Australia wide, but whether you have one local to you, I'm not sure. I don't know where else they're based. We do have one local to us and there are a lot of older ladies, um, lots of grandmas who get together and they all spin and yeah, it's really, really cool to see. They have a lot of connections. <laughs> so um, yeah, getting in touch with your local spinners and weavers is another really good idea because yeah, a lot of these women and men have been spinning and in the fiber world for a long time so they may have connections local to you as well that they would probably be happy to pass on because i know that when juniper and i have gone out to our spinners and weavers they're super excited to see you know the next generation of people kind of yeah still doing this craft and upholding all of that good stuff so yeah spinners and weavers is a really good thing and facebook um just put it out there just that you're looking for fiber um yeah even instagram could be another good thing but that's yeah um i've just been really lucky to have most of it kind of fall in my lap at this point so yes um before we get started and get stuck into the video um i just want to go over things that you will 
need um, to process your fiber. You will need gloves because if you're processing raw, it's dirty. These animals are out in fields and they're rolling around in mud and you just don't know what's going to be in it. So definitely get a good pair of long gloves. Um, if you're working with fiber as well, um, you can um, build up a react an allergic or an allergy to things like that. So definitely gloves. Um, I've mentioned that I have sensitive skin, so I like to just make sure that there's no extra nasties kind of touching my skin. Um, another good thing is to get outside and do it. You'll see the dirt that comes out of the alpaca that I have, and it re was relatively um, clean as well. There's lots of um, VM in it, which was easy to kind of pick out, but it was relatively clean, but the water was just so, so dirty. Um, so you don't want that inside your house. So trying to get outside to do that is really, really good. Um, a bucket because you don't necessarily want all of that in your kitchen sink. Um, if you have a laundry basin would probably be a better option if you have to do it inside um, because you don't want that in where you're cooking your food. It's pretty, pretty gross. So yeah, getting outside, covering yourself with gloves and apron as well because as you'll see, all the dirt that comes off the fiber onto your clothes, it's not the best. Um, I use wool wash to, to wash my alpaca. Um, unlike wool, um, sheep's wool, um, alpaca doesn't contain lanolin. So it is hypoallergenic. Um, it doesn't have the lanolin which holds onto the other nasties um, which people can be allergic to. Um, but it also means that you don't have to wash it as harshly as you would wool because you're not trying to get the lanolin out of it. Um, with wool, you need really hot water um, to draw the lanolin out. Um, you don't have to do that with alpaca. So you can, I mean, you don't have to use boiling hot water like you do with wool. I just use hot water from my tap. It's warm enough. Um, I choose to use wool wash. Again, with sensitive skin, um, it just... It doesn't flare my skin up, so I'm just kind of holding on and working with that. I've seen people using um, dish soap to clean their wool as well. So again, whatever works for you, it's easy. Um, yeah, I think that's all that you would need for that. Um, and then coming to processing, like carding it, there are so many different options for carding. Um, I did mention in my last blog that my mum just got a drum carter, um, which makes things a lot easier. Um, these pieces, these little ones, um, were done in the drum carter. So there are a lot, there's a lot more in that. And these little ones I've done on my hand carters, which are just here, I'll show you in a minute. So they're two different ways of carding. It still, it still works up to fleece and fibre that you're going to spin. So whichever way works for you, whatever you have access to. Um, I started um, carding my fibres off with this. It's just a dog brush, an animal brush um, from the reject shop. I think it was like $2, super, super cheap, um, easy to find. And yeah, you just picking out like you do, um, you'll see in the video, just picking out um, fibers, the longer staples and brushing them out. Um, and you can just spin from that. So that's a really easy, affordable option. If you're new to processing fiber and you don't want to commit to tools and things like that yet. Yeah, super easy option. Um, if you want to see how I did it with this, let me know because I'm happy to do maybe just a little reel or a short to show you how I used this one. But yeah, that was how I first started off carding uh, my fiber. Um, and then I found these. Um, these are Ashford hand carders. I'm not sure what ones these are. These um, I got at our spinners and weavers. Um, these were second hand and they're in perfect condition. Um, I think I paid $20 for these. Um, you can buy them brand new. They're about $80, I think, retail. 
um, places like the Wool Room and the Good Yarn um, sell hand carters. Um, I'll show you in my video how I use my hand carters. Um, and yeah, I guess looking on Marketplace, um, I try to find things secondhand as much as I can. Um, yeah, it's a great place to look. My spinning wheel, I also got secondhand for a lot under the recommended retail price. So yeah, Facebook Marketplace is a really good place to kind of keep an eye on. Um, yeah, so, and then I guess one up from that is a drum carter. Um, they retail from, I think about five to $700. So they're definitely an investment. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to be processing a lot of fleece, a lot of fiber, then it's definitely worth the investment. So yes, that's about it for those. Um, yeah, I think we'll get into the video and I'll let you know step by step how I go about processing my fleece. So this is the big bag of alpaca that I've been working on. I've been going through, um, um, I like to do this outside because it is a pretty dirty process. I have my laundry bag that I use to wash my fibre with as well. Um, as I said, gloves are a necessity when you're dealing with raw fibre because it is pretty dirty and you want to keep yourself safe. So what I usually do is I'll grab a handful at a time and kind of pick through bits um, and find any bits of um, sticks and dirt and things that you don't want in your fibre. Um, there's usually little bits of um, fleece as well that is too short to be able to spin so really just looking through it here to find things that are too short to spin and you don't want in your yarn so this bit was pretty good there wasn't a whole lot that I needed to pick through staple length is pretty good on these bits this means that it's going to be a lot easier to spin your fiber they're pretty long um, if there are short bits you can't spin it so you're looking for longer staple lengths like these are uh, just perfect
just how dirty this is. These are just like bigger bits that are kind of falling off as um, I'm picking through it. So definitely like to cover your clothes with something while you're doing this and a good reason why we should do it while we're outside. So this is just a little bit with what I'll be working with today. Um, as you can see there's quite a bit but once you wet it it's not going to look like a lot. Um, and yeah the Delicates bag is a really good way to keep it all together. Um, so you don't have bits of fibre floating around in your bucket. This is the wool wash that I use when I'm cleaning my fibre. Um, it works well for me. Um, my skin doesn't react to it. You can also use dishwashing liquid. I've seen a lot of people using different things. so. This is just showing you what I use. There wasn't a whole lot left of this, um, but you really don't need that much for such a small amount of fiber. wash around in the warm water you don't want to go from hot water to cold water because it will shock the fibers and it will felt so now you're going to just gently push your fiber into the water and you want to do this really gently because if you are too rough with your fiber it will felt and you will ruin it and you won't be able to spin it um you're going to want lukewarm water or warm water you don't want to go from hot to cold water because you will shock your fibers and again they will felt you can see already how much dirt is coming out of this fiber um and this is why we want to wear gloves. You don't want this on your hands. Um, I like to soak my fibers for a little bit for the first wash. So once it's soaked a little bit and some of the fibers have loosened up, you can pull it out. When you are getting water out of your fiber, you don't want to wring it. And again, trying to be quite gentle. You kind of want to press and fold the water out instead of wringing it to avoid it being filtered. So once you've really washed that fibre and you've gotten most of the dirt out, you can press some more water out. Um, I like to wash mine with soap and water at least twice, maybe three times, depending how dirty your fibre is, and then just rinse with plain water and yeah, until the water is clear and then it's ready to dry. I usually grab them just some pegs and in with my laundry bag, I'll just peg this to my washing line. It's summer at the moment, so this will dry fairly quickly. Um, and that's one of the good things of living in Australia, I guess. You can just see how dirty this is. And this is obviously the first wash. There wasn't a lot of fibre out there either. But you can see just how dirty it is. And definitely why we should be doing this outside. So now you should have your dry and clean fibre and you're ready to start carding it. Today I'm going to be carding with my Ashford hand carders and I got these ones second hand and I absolutely love them. So what you're going to do is go through your clean fibre and you're going to be looking for longer staple lengths. This is another 
good chance to go through and find any VM that you've missed or any little bits that won't be great for spinning, um, anything that you may have missed when you were going through it before you washed it. through and find again the good staple length pieces and I lay them all facing the same way and try and just comb out any tips that may have um, may have not really washed out there may be a little bit more dust in them still that um, didn't get out with washing and pack it in like this then you go in and from the tips you pull and you are moving your hands down. You're moving the fleece from one cutter to the other and it's just brushing out any bits and pieces and getting them all kind of uniform. So you're just moving it from one to another. It's in a rocking motion. Um, you'll see in a minute the shape of the hand carters as well um, and they're kind of made for that rocking motion so then we're just going to swap over and we'll do that back and forth and we're yeah, moving it from one hand carter to the next in that rocking motion i'd like to do this at least twice sometimes three times depending on what fiber I'm working with but once you get the hang of it you'll kind of be able to see what works for you and what you're happy with. Once that's done we lift it up and we can pull off the carded fiber and I like to just roll these up and you can kind of just draw them from the middle like this and they are ready to be spun however you want to spin your fiber. I keep all of mine in this little basket so they're easy just to take in.
these are my Ashford hand carters. As I said, I got these second hand. You can see there that they are curved and this is because when you're hand carting, you are using them in a kind of a sweeping motion like this and you're working and pulling it down and rocking. So these, when I got them, they were almost brand new and yeah, I absolutely love them. They work really, really well and it makes the whole process really, really easy. So once you have all of your clean and carded fibre, you are ready to spin. You can spin however you choose to, um, on a spindle or a spinning wheel, an e-spinner, however you choose. I have a Ashford Traveller that I love and I am going to be spinning all of my alpaca on this.
how I go about processing my fiber. I hope that this has been easy to follow and um, it's giving you all some insight on how things are done. It's giving you some inspiration to maybe try your hand at processing some fiber. Um, and I hope I've answered all of the questions that you all have had. Um, if I haven't, please feel free to comment down below. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to hear any tips or tricks or things that you have found have helped you when you're processing your fiber. Um, or you can find me over on The Mindful Maker um, on Instagram. I'm always um, available there as well to answer questions. Um, I will be doing another video um, more in depth of spinning the fleece. I thought that I would try and keep this as short as I possibly can. Um, so I will do a video um, just on spinning um, later down the track. So any questions that you have with that, um, yeah, feel free to ask and I will cover that in my next video with spinning. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me and I hope that I'll see you all again really, really soon. Bye.